Map Sen versus Tasia. It all comes down to this. I would never steal from you, Mike. I would never steal from you. Never steal anything? N never. All right, in the bottom left-hand corner, the liquid player. The blue Terran, it is Tasia. His opponent, the Taiwanese superstar, the Red Zerg. It's Gaminia Sen. And Derelict Watcher, as we were saying, good for Zerg in the beginning and mid stages, not so great at the late stages. Uh, talk to me a little bit about why Zerg is good in the mid stages. Well, the map is so wide open in, the, in front of the third base in the natural that it makes it difficult for Terran to do a push against Sen's third and natural. And we kind of saw that in Frost too. It's the same dynamic here, it's just so open. And it delays Sen's third a tiny bit, and maybe he can find a window to punish that a little bit. Also, it can make it easier to stop creep spread, mm -hmm. which is one thing that Zerg often wants to get going early on this map. Well, is this even a situation where we can count on Sen going for roaches? I feel like that might even be an overstep by Tasia to say, okay, well, he goes roaches every game, but we've only really seen him two games. That's not a large sample set, so... Well, you can't count on that, but... It the Hellion Banshee play is still pretty good against Ling Banding as well. Okay. Okay. Well, two additional queens are popping out here, making it a total of five queens. So it's almost like Sen knows exactly what his opponent is doing, getting almost the perfect build, I would say, as five queens will be able to shut this down pretty easily, or at least.
but I'm getting a little bit worried. Income tab 69, harvesters to 55 now. The incomes are pretty equivalent, but the gas count for Sen is approaching a lot faster. And now the first push out is starting up here. Tasia is not heeding your warning. And this is a 1 1 timing for Tasia, by the way. I think it's just going to be to clean up the creep tumors, though. I think so, too. Yeah. Because if you look at the bio, it's just the right amount for him to lift up in the medevacs and fly away if too many units come for his. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Sen preparing some sort of push out. He wants to reclaim this area so he can replace creep tumors over there. Banshee is going to go over to the third base, and now they engage. Too much damage. Plus three attack just got started. That means plus two just finished. And Sen, I feel like, just took a massive win there. Yeah, that was an enormous win. And even though you pointed out that one incredibly good Widow Mine connection, that doesn't make up for the six Widow Mines that just died to the banning. <laughs> That's they true. Wearing. I mean, that is a lot of AoE that you're missing out in that battle. So unfortunate. Tasia going to have to go back to square one. Now, he does have this hatchery at half-life, but with transfuses, Sen will be able to retain that. And he knows that's a big point of contention, so he's keeping his units near that area.
Well, he's getting plus two building armor. So yeah. he doesn't have all the upgrades he wants. I mean, but I think he wants to push sometime soon. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> because, kidding. <laughs> like, it just yeah, gets yeah. better for Zerg in this situation. Zerg can re-max quicker. Yep. And he's doing the Ultraless Caverna now. So now is the time when is going to want to push. Yeah, and the transition switches are really awkward yeah. for Terran, I think. Like, you need a good count of, of bio and uh, and Widow Mines to, to fend off against the Ultras, or at least the Ultra Switch, and especially you need a large Marauder count. Normally your infrastructure isn't geared up for that, so you need to be at like a trailing switch. And here's Actually hit the wrong thing, and where set? Where's the rest of Sen's army? Banelings are going to connect on the Widow Mines, but still, it's not a lot left. And well, 60 Zerglings in production, eight Banelings as well. Yeah, I think Sun. I'm not sure why he's not adding any Infestors in. If he had a couple Infestors in this composition, it would make it a lot yeah, easier to clean up his bio. Just shut that down. But as it stands, he doesn't, and he hasn't continued or he hasn't upgraded anything that that speaks to me in Festers, and he's consistently often, he's having these fights here. Yeah, he's also not taking all of his gases, which is unusual for his Zergon 5 base. He's leaving two of them out.
And he's just going to drill in yet again. Great focus fire by the Widow Mines, by the way. He's consistently just taking one of them and targeting the Banelings, and that's why you have some great connections instead of targeting the Ultras. I'm not actually sure how much he's doing that, though. It'd be interesting to ask him, because it looks like Sun isn't microing as well as he could, though. He's kind of just like A-moving and sending all his units forwards, and a lot of them are dying well, in his mines. My gosh, and it's just... It keeps coming in. Now, Sen looks like he's finally able to stabilize. I think 3-3 three, three, uh, definitely assists in this. The mine's getting cleaned up, and again... What's happened here, though? Are he you such a supply lead out of nowhere. Great job. Again, another hold here in the top left-hand position. And the supplies are looking at 165 to 119. Command center is being taken out in the top left. Tejas lost a lot of his Widow Mines, too. This, oh, Bailings, no! Mines. Uh, Bailings are actually blocking a lot of these units, but now he's going to go in for it. No Mines are in this composition. Uh, maybe there are. Sorry. And Bailings are not going to get the right connections. All of a sudden, Tejas is overpowering his opponent. Ultra's coming in for...